guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today we're looking at part three of the MP573 build from Sound Sculptor. And if you've been following along, the MP573 from Sound Sculptor is a DIY 500 series mic preamp and it's based on the famous Neve style microphone preamps that have this amazing transform former based uh, sound and saturation and they're very integral in a lot of major recordings and are commonly found in a lot of famous recording studios and the 500 series is a way to get that sound in a much smaller form factor into your home studio and today we're going to be looking at the last part of the build which is finishing the di construction for instrument inputs and then also the testing phase so how we actually test it using a multimeter and making sure we're getting correct signal and we haven't got any major issues going on with the preamp and the soldering that we've done and all those kinds of things. And if you like this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe down below and let me know in the comment section if there's any questions you have about any sort of preamp gear or anything that you're looking for in your home studio. But let's get into it. All right, welcome back. This is part three of the uh, Sound Sculptor MP573 Neve style microphone preamp build. So uh, if you've been following along, We've already had part one and two where we installed the main PCB components and in video two, the last video, we actually uh, installed the uh, input and output transformers and some of the larger components. And for this video, this is the final video and we're going to be looking at installing the DI input for the mic preamp. So this is where you'll be able to plug in your bass guitar or electric guitar directly into the mic pre and get that nice transformer sound from the preamp. And the first thing we're going to be doing is forming some resistors to lie flat on the board. So you can use that forming tool we used back in uh, video one. Um, makes it easier to get the right measurements for the legs so that they slide nicely into that PCB. And um, you can just use your PDF to find where the um, locations are for each of those resistors and there's not too many components in this DI build so um, it shouldn't take too long but we start with the horizontal resistors and then after they're all placed we go to the vertical resistors and once again with vertical resistors you want to make sure that the longer leg so the resistor the bottom of the resistor touches the part of the board that has the little circle and I'll zoom on that here and then uh, you want to make sure the other leg that's hooked over I use like a little allen key to hook the leg over and bend it so it bent nice and neat and then once you've done that vertical resistor it's onto the diodes so there's a couple of diodes and remember they're polarized so you want to make sure that the little black line um, is the one that lines up vertically so it's up the top and the um, red part of the body goes down into where the circle part of the circuit board is so you should be hooking over the leg that has the black line and leaving straight the um, part that has the red just the red body and once those are in place you can flip the board and start soldering all those legs so the components are quite close together on this little board uh, so it can be a little tricky but like before all you want to do is start from the outside and do the components that are easiest to get to and then snip them if you have to to get those legs out of the way and then move over to the next component just being careful while you solder that you don't uh, cross any of the connections so none of your solder links any two of the components together you don't want any crosses or shorts um, because that can obviously create problems later on. And then once the resistors and diodes are done, there's this little silver film capacitor to solder to the board. And how I did that was just tape it to the board like I did with all the red Weimar um, film capacitors and then uh, solder the first leg, check the orientation on the board was good, and then flip the board back over and solder the last leg and then snip it. And then once you've done that capacitor, it's on to the two transistors for this board. 
and basically you need to double check your orientation again with transistors uh, the semicircle has to match the shape of the transistor there um, with those both of those and then there's actually two positions that you can have the second transistor in and you need to look at the board there's a little a and a b and you want the pins to line up with the a position so the back of the transistor where the semicircle is should line up with this little sort of semicircle um, part where the A is on the board. It's quite small but um, yeah just make sure you get that orientation correct. And then after that it's up to the uh, electrolytic capacitors and remember once again these are polarized so there is a plus and negative um, side and the negative is where the white silver strip is and the positive is the longer lead on the legs so it's pretty easy to determine which one's positive and negative so make sure that they are um, uh, aligned properly with the board and then uh, solder them in place and then once you've done all those smaller components uh, it's up to doing the uh, jack connector so this is where the instrument lead is going to plug in and um, basically you want to make sure that this component sits nice and flat on the board so what I did was the same trick as always uh, tape it to the board uh, make sure it's sitting as flat as possible solder one of the pins and then undo the tape and then have a look at it make sure it's sitting nice and flush on the board if it isn't you can re-solder it um, and then solder the rest of the pins once that's ready and then you should have a little di circuit that's looking nice and neat but what you want to do is clean that board uh, the di board with some isopropyl alcohol make sure there's no residue solder or flux on the board and if you haven't done what i did if you remember back in video one and i'll put the link here um, i actually soldered um, the di connector to the board and it had the other attachment already plugged in so i'm not going to solder the pins to the di board until later on but if you have those parts separate you can solder the header to your board now um, but i'm going to show you how to do that later so we're going to start by doing some basic testing so you need to get a multimeter for this and what we're going to do is test these three pins and um, we're going to check for certain voltage so uh, you need to get your digital multimeter and check for ohms and if you haven't already you should be looking at the uh, mp573 setup guide instead of the assembly guide and um, there's these points that are v minus ov and v plus and you should get a value greater than one kilo ohm at these points. Uh, if you don't have uh, greater than one kilo ohm reading on your multimeter, there's a short somewhere. So you should inspect the board and check for any shorts and make sure that it's all good. But if you are getting the right readings, then it's okay to move on to test two in the setup guide. So we're gonna now remove the DI board if you've already put it there, but you shouldn't have um, connected the DI board yet then you want to unplug the output transformer connector that's going into the main PCB and then you want to insert one of the little jumpers that come in the pack and put that on JMP3 and then that's going to allow the signal to flow properly for the tests and then once you've done that you can either plug your board in I'm going to be using the XT500 extender that I got with this kit I built it myself um, but you can buy it pre-built if you want it built and it's great because it allows you to do this part of the testing um, outside of the uh, 500 series chassis so you can get to everything nice and easy and it's nice and safe and you can't risk um, shorting or electrocuting yourself by accident with while trying to test basically the 500 series unit while it's in the rack i think that's pretty dangerous so you definitely want to get one of these extenders and then you want to power up the rack and make sure that the chassis is far enough away from the rack so it doesn't come into contact with it because you don't want any of the metal parts touching each other and creating a short and then you want to get your little alligator clips and connect uh, the negative lead to tp2 and the positive lead to test pin with v plus on it 
And when you turn your power on on the uh, 500 rack, you should get a reading of about 24.2 volts. The value might vary depending on which 500 series rack you're using, but it should be pretty close to that. And as I went along, I wrote down all the values I'm getting so I could make sure everything was all good. And if you get that 24.2 volts, you're all good and you can turn off the power. After that, you want to insert the output transformer connector that we'd already disconnected and make the same check. And the voltage should be a little bit lower, around 24 volts. And then next, we're going to get a little flathead screwdriver to adjust the bias of uh, Q6, which was that little potentiometer, the blue one with the sort of copper little screw. So what you want to do um, is get your plus, your positive probe and clip that to test pin four and your negative uh, clip and put that on test pin two. And then we're basically gonna turn the potentiometer and make sure that the voltage we're reading is around three volts. It should be exactly three volts. So you just turn it until you get that voltage reading on your multimeter. Um, if you're not getting a change in voltage uh, when turning that potentiometer, it means that you might have an error on the board and you might need to resolder the potentiometer. And if you're not getting any voltage, you'll probably have a short somewhere, but we should have already corrected that issue earlier on. And then uh, you want to do a basic test of the preamp while it's in the 500 series rack. So. You can see right now, um, I'm actually running through my MP566 Pre, which is my Tube Pre, which I love the sound of for doing voice work. Um, but I'm gonna swap over to the MP573. So give me a sec to do that. All right, so you're gonna hear me on the camera mic for a sec. And basically what I need to do here is adjust the preamp gain all the way down to 10 and the output gain to zero. Okay, then we want to make sure the phantom power is off. All right, and then we just need to turn up the preamp input gain until we hear that it's working and we start getting some signal on the light here. So this is an SM7B, so it's going to take a fair bit of gain to start hearing it. And hopefully, here we go, we start to get the gain from the input stage of the microphone. Then I can try turning up the output gain and we have a nice level coming through the preamp there and um, you can see that 60 db again or 70 db again with the output is um, quite enough to run this sm7b just at a talking level and then the best thing to do after that is then check your impedances and you'll notice there's a bit of a character change in my voice when i change it from 300 to 1200 ohms there's a bit more of a boost in that low end you hear it there and that can be very nice when you're recording bass or if you want a bit more low end to a vocal and there's also this line switch which is for if you're going to be running these in stereo on maybe a stereo bus or something you want to add a bit of saturation so my voice will drop out again and you'll hear me through the camera mic and then we'll go back to the normal one and then you can just check your polarity switch works and it should be in an opposite phase and then put it back to mute and it'll be muted and then the polarity is back there so basically you got to check all those switches and then do the same thing with a condenser microphone and then check the phantom power is working and you should be all good and then after that if you've got all the correct signal there's no weird phase issues all your switches are working all the dials are working you can then power off the 500 series rack and then you want to take the 500 series mp573 unit out of that 500 rack and we're going to install the di so you need to get the di that we built earlier the di circuit and we're going to put on the washers and insert the board into the actual main PCB to be soldered. So if you did it correctly, you would already have the header attached and it's going to then slot into the uh, PCB board. And I did this the wrong way around. The header should have already come out, but 
I'm also going to take out this jumper on JMP3. We had inserted while the DI wasn't um, connected to the board and we did our testing. So you need to take that little jumper back off. And then we can solder the DI board to the main PCB uh, header connector. So if you did it the right way, you will just be uh, plugging that into the connector on the PCB board. Um, but if, if you remember, I did this kind of the wrong way around because I was a bit scared of forcing that component apart and um, I soldered it and then there's no harm in doing it this way. Um, basically what happens is once it was soldered to the DI board, I could take the DI in and out and it came out of that component connecting to the PCB board rather easily without breaking it. And once that's done, you've got an awesome looking, awesome sounding preamp to add to your studio. So that's the build and thanks for joining me on that build journey. Um, it's been an awesome process of building my own preamps and it's kind of this very rewarding feeling to know that I've built this very integral part of my studio and they sound amazing. And if you wanna hear some samples of what the MP573 sounds like, hit me up in those comments sections down below and let me know if there's any kind of shootouts you wanna see from here on out. I'm super keen to start trialing a whole heap of different setups on drums and guitars and vocals and really sort of push these preamps to the limits. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and I'll catch you soon.